Alright everyone, this is my review of the Gradle Labs SR225i headphones as well as the Dragonfly digital to analog converter that plugs into a USB port. So if you don't have a lot of time for the full review, I'll just get to the important thing first, which is the sound. Now, when you first get these uh, Gradles, just like any, like any other high-end headphone, you have to have them burn in. You know, you have to loosen up the driver, you have to just run music through it, and just and just make sure that the drivers loosen up and that um, you can get a more balanced sound. Now, when I first plugged this thing into my laptop, it was bad. <laughs> I mean, there are some uh, electronic music that I couldn't even listen to because the snare hits or the drum hits, too piercing. So, I think the, the rule of thumb on Gradles is you give it about 24 hours of burn-in. After that, the driver is going to loosen up, and you're going to have a more... Uh, realistic bass response. The bass is actually going to come out and come more alive to you. And then the, uh, the the treble should attenuate itself. So, you know, 24 hour burn in time, that's the minimum. It, you know, it'll probably take you like a good month for you to get it really uh, burned in. Okay, now the characteristics, the acoustic characteristics of the SR225s. For reference, I was coming from the SR80s, okay? Now, the thing about the SR80s, sure, it, it had a pretty good sound stage, it had pretty good stereo separation, but I could always tell, for one, it was uh, it was muddy. I knew that there was some colorization of the music going on. And because that color was there, I always knew it was masking some of the uh, tonal accuracy of everything. You know, the, uh, the stereo separation wasn't as clean, the um, the instruments kind of sounded like squished together without any fine uh, resonance or space in the part. So that was my complaint about the SR80s. They're good entry level gradles. They're only a hundred bucks, and if you want to get your tolls wet into the uh, into the higher end market, that's that's the gateway drug. That's the one that you get. So when you start getting a little bit higher up into the line. When you look at the Prestige series, um, $200, these cost $200, the 325s cost $300, and really the Prestige series, they're, uh, they're all entry level. I mean, in the world of hi-fi, $300 for a product is nothing. So, I mean, I see some guys get really extravagant. So anyways, for $200, what are you going to get? Well, the thing that you're going to get on the 225s more than anything is detail resolution. What do I mean by that? Basically, when you plug it in, you're gonna hear instruments, you're gonna hear things that you never heard before in your music. Stuff that was buried, stuff that, that you know, was just uh, overpowered by other things. The 225s clean up the low end. So the low end isn't anywhere as muffled as this. This has a lot of low end on it, but at the same time, it's, um, that low end is also covering up a lot of the fine acoustic detail. These don't do that. And I think a, a consequence of that is the, um, the bass isn't as punchy as you would like it to be. You know, if, if you listen to a lot of hip hop, if you listen to a lot of electronic music with a bunch of punch, you know, um, you may find these lacking. But that's... At least in these headphones, that's what they had to do in order to uncover or unmask the uh, everything that's in there. So that's the thing about this. When you get these, even after you burn them in, they're going to sound bright. The high frequencies are going to be, like, everything's going to sound like high and maybe even piercing. You know, you got to get used to it. Um, so it does live in the in the higher frequency spectrum. And but the mid range is actually really good. When I listen to mid range, there is clarity there, and it's not overpowering, and um, it does sound natural. It does sound pretty good and natural. So the mid the mids are there. It's just that the uh, the brightness level, the brightness meter of the uh, of the two twenty five really got pushed up. So that's my one complaint. Not so much of a complaint, that's my observation. It's not a complaint, it's just I gotta get used to it still. 
Okay. Um, so, now that we got the important stuff out of the way, some minor differences. This has a steel grating around the, uh, the ear cup. This uses cheaper plastic. I believe the steel allows for the uh, for the airflow. You get more airflow out of the out of the cups. So more airflow, more 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 uh, things that can be driven at the same time. The other thing too. It's a very thick cord. It's a very robust cord. Um, this cord is about twice the diameter and twice the heaviness of the SR80 cord. I don't know if that's showing up. But this cord is basically twice the SR80 cord. And the thing about that too, is that this terminates to a quarter inch fitting. So a quarter inch jack, which means when I bought it, I had to spend $15 for this quarter inch to eighth inch adapter. And I just got the greater one just because I wanted it to be good. So I got this little adapter, plugs it in. And you have this pigtail coming off of the jack, running into your iPod or your MacBook, and it's kind of heavy. So just kind of be aware of that. Uh, the other thing too, the ear cups, they come with these types of ear cups, ear bowls. The ear bowls work well, um, good accuracy, good resolution of everything. So I actually like these. These are good if you want really accurate listening, or as accurate as you can get. Versus these, these really, these really get in the way of the music. It muffles everything, and it smears the bass even more than by itself. So you gotta watch out on these ear pads. These are much better for the job. Okay, let's talk about uh, DACs. So this is the Dragonfly, 24-bit, 96 kilohertz DAC. And uh, the good thing, it has a really good build quality on it. Um, it kind of has a, a matte plastic to it, so it doesn't really pick up too many fingerprints. So it has a really good feel to it. Um, it's very simple, USB port, headphone mount. <laughs> So, I mean, you just slide it into your computer, plug in your headphones, and it's pretty much going to start working right away. I don't know how efficient it is under Windows, but in OS X, it's practically plug and play. So that's the thing I really like about this. Okay, let's talk a little bit about DACs and headphones. So, this costs $250. This is actually cost more than the headphones. Now the reason why I spent that kind of money on a little stick for a digital to analog converter is because I just knew inherently it would be a shame to drive really nice headphones or medium or average headphones through the crappy sound port on your MacBook. I mean, if you're listening to SR80s, it doesn't matter. But when you start stepping up to like $300 headphones or $500 headphones, that's when you want a simple, separate amplifier and separate conversion chain to drive your headphones. So that's why I, I justify this. Now the reviews of the Dragonfly. Um, pretty much every review I've said um, says this performs as it should. You know, you're buying something for $250 to $300 you compare this to other other DACs, and um, it does just as well as anyone else. The thing I love about this is the fact that it's basically a USB thumb drive, or it's a USB stick. This is really no bigger than a thumb drive. And I love the fact that I can just carry this anywhere with me. You know, airports, friend's house. Any place that I need where I want good quality sound, this can come with me everywhere. So I really, I really like this design and the compactness of it. Um, so the thing that should be said, now when you start going up into the higher end stuff, like I'd say 500, 700, 
you know, the, the high-end stuff, you know, that's when I would consider getting, like, the really heavy gear. Like, maybe a really good quality uh, $600 DAC. And if I were running $800 headphones, right? But even in these, even in the 225s being driven by this USB DAC, you want to download files, as high quality files as possible. Now, for the past two or three years, I haven't, I made it a rule to rip everything in Apple Lossless. So Apple Lossless is a pretty good codec. I mean, it's, it's, it's equivalent to FLAC, right? So I, I rip everything in, in Lossless. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to see the 2496. So, so I, I went, you know, I, I downloaded a couple of their, their vinyl rips. So what they do is that they, they literally take a vinyl record and they run it through their computer and they rip directly from the record into the computer at 24 bit 96 kilohertz. And I, I really, I really like 96 K cause you know, CD sample rates, it's 44.1 kilohertz and the vinyl rips are 96 kilohertz. So you have two times the sampling resolution available to you. And when you pair it up with a good pair of clean, clean headphones, with this, you will notice a difference. The, it sounds like the sound is smoother, right? Like on basically any musical genre, or especially on drums, drums and guitars, um, it sounds like that there's a smoother slope going across the, uh, going across the music as you're listening to it. It just sounds smoother. And you know, I, I switch back to a standard CD rip and 44.1 is like, oh, it's, it's not that great. It's not that great. So, you know, make sure you have high quality rips. You know, if you can, or if you really need to, then torrent, you know, albums that, that, that are kind of hard to come by. That's what I did. I torrented some stuff and um, it sounded good. So that's my conclusion. I mean, if you really consider this as a system or as a total package, I would say, you know, for $250, you are definitely getting it. Um, when you plug this in, you get about 10 to 15% improvement in sound resolution and, and detail accuracy when you throw this thing into your laptop. So 10 to 15% really good. This, um, it's bright. The trebles are kind of high. Yet at the same time, it's it resolves everything perfectly. You will hear things in these uh, 225s. And these, if you're just starting out, SR80s are a good thing, you know. I've had these for about seven years now. I mean, these lasted me seven years. But um, once you start going into the into the uh, more medium grade or more high fidelity kind of sound, that's when you're going to really start to uh, want to kind of make it more of a hobby. So I'm not I'm not a I'm more of an audio enthusiast. I'm not an audiophile, but I could see myself being an audio file all right anyways so um yeah that's about it have a good one peace